Good afternoon on today's Angry Bulletin. Last month, with absolutely zero fanfare, Dr. Avi Loeb and his colleagues put out the final results, the final analysis of all the debris they recovered at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean last year. And the results are absolutely astounding. First of all, it completely debunks the notion that the tiny spherules found at the bottom of the Pacific were coal ash or any other product of human civilization. They are instead a unique substance, something radically different than anything we have ever found on Earth before, and it came from another solar system. All of this and more coming at you on The Angry Astronaut right now. Good afternoon, and once again, welcome to The Angry Astronaut. So, it's been a little while since I put out an alien-related video, and this one is particularly interesting. Well, as far as I'm concerned, it's a scientific breakthrough. A breakthrough that is, by the way, being completely ignored by the mainstream media, by the scientific community, by everybody because it's been published by Dr. Avi Loeb, who, as far as I'm concerned, now has a completely destroyed credibility amongst his peers. Well, that is, at least when it comes to papers like this, some of you may not know that Avi Loeb is a respected astrophysicist in just about every other respect, and he actually has had two papers published so far recently, and both of them were peer-reviewed and both of them have been published. No problem. As long as you don't talk about aliens, we're not going to give you any difficulties. But if you do start talking about aliens, we are going to mock you, we're going to do everything we can to discredit you, and when it appears that we even even have the flimsiest evidence to demonstrate that what you're saying isn't true, then the mainstream media is going to rip you apart. Even if you later discover that this evidence was in error, that further analysis has demonstrated that your conclusions are absolutely true and that these naysayers were absolutely wrong, well, the media is just going to make sure to not talk about that at all because it would require them to issue a retraction as well. Oh, by the way, as I've mentioned a couple of times now, I now have a retraction policy on my channel. My email address is available if you think that I have said something that is factually untrue, and you can demonstrate that to me, email me, and I have a panel of my supporters who are going to review all of these uh, requests, all of these critiques, and if any of them require a retraction, well, I'll be happy to put one forward on my channel. Okay. Enough talk about that. So what has happened? What new developments have taken place that have led Avi Loeb to conclude that we have most probably found wreckage from an alien spacecraft or an alien probe of some kind? What new evidence has come to light to lead him to this radical of a conclusion? Extraordinary claims require extraordinary proof. Do we have that extraordinary proof at last? I believe that we do. For decades now, witnesses all over the world, and particularly witnesses with the U.S. military, have been seeing unusual things in our skies. Things that have been confirmed with other types of surveillance equipment, including radar, IR sensors, all sorts of things that have concluded that there are objects that we simply can't explain, oftentimes flying over military bases like this one. And they all seem to share a common trait. Well, lots of them do. They are spherical and they are relatively small, ranging anywhere from one to perhaps five meters in diameter. Too small to be crude ships, but certainly the right size to be some sort of probe or drone. 
So how do we know this isn't some sort of human manufactured drone? Well, for one thing, these things seem to exhibit capabilities that are way beyond our current technology. Something that is this shape without any wings, without any visible means of propulsion, and without making any noise, often vacate areas at supersonic velocities or at least at hundreds of kilometers per hour. Currently, we don't have any sort of drone that is capable of this, at least as far as we know. But now, it appears that we have a solid connection with an object that hit our planet back in 2014. Now, a lot of you probably already know the details about all of this, so I'm just going to summarize very quickly. And by the way, I'm going to be quoting extensively from a paper that was just released last month by Avi Loeb and his colleagues at the Galileo Project. Quote, on January 8, 2014, U.S. government satellite sensors detected three atmospheric detonations in rapid succession approximately 84 kilometers north of Manus Island off the coast of New Guinea. Analysis of the trajectory suggested an interstellar origin of the object CNOS 2014, an arrival velocity relative to Earth of more than 45 kilometers per second, and a vector tracked back to outside the plane of the ecliptic. The object broke apart at an unusually low altitude of approximately 17 kilometers. This suggests that the object was substantially stronger than any of the other 272 objects in our meteorite catalog, including the 5% of meteors comprised of iron. Now, the fireball light energy suggests that approximately 500 kilograms of material was ablated by the fireball and converted into ablation spherules. Now, this is the sort of thing that we find with most meteorite impacts. And for those of you who are thinking that I'm just clickbaiting you and I'm actually going to talk about an interstellar meteor and not a UAP or UFO, hang in there. We're getting to this point. So, an expedition was dispatched last year that searched for remnants of the meteorite labeled hereafter as IM-1. They utilized a 14-meter catamaran workboat called the Silver Star. A 200-kilogram sled was used with 300 magnets mounted on both of its sides and a video camera mounted on the tow bridle. Approximately 0.06 square kilometers were sampled in the target area where IM-1 is suspected to have impacted. And by the way, a control area was also sampled outside of the impact region to see whether or not similar debris might be found. If it was, then obviously this debris did not come from the object, but rather from some other source. And interestingly enough, a total of 850 spherules, the type of spherules one would expect to find near a meteorite impact, were located using this method. Now, most of these samples, 780 of them, were analyzed once they returned home with what's called a micro XRF, a device that carries out X-ray fluorescent microscopy. And that is simply to determine the general chemical composition of what these spherules were made out of. And it was equipped, by the way, with a Brooker Tornado M4, and that enhances the spectrographic analysis of the objects. This was then mapped and imaged, and then spot chemical analyses were subsequently made with what's called an electron probe microanalyzer. Measurements of elemental abundances for about 60 major and trace elements were performed for 70 samples, provided sufficient data for the spherules to be divided into three different classifications. By the way, before all of this analysis was even completed, another scientist decided to release his own paper 
debunking, so it was said anyway, the analysis that was being carried out on these spherules and saying that the composition more closely resembled coal ash. By the way, the analysis was not yet complete. The person who published this analysis did not even have access to the spherules. He simply came to his conclusion based on the preliminary results that Avi Loeb published, not the final results. And yet, the moment he put this information out, the media jumped on it as if it were the gospel truth. Let me go ahead and read you a fragment of one of the articles that these so-called journalists put out about this particular discovery. Quote, only after you have eliminated the impossible can you begin to consider the improbable. And that is the problem with Loeb's investigation of the spherules. He did not start with the null hypothesis, but instead went into the investigation with the assumption that it was likely to lead to aliens or at least to interstellar objects. At least now, we know the truth about the spherules, but the rise and fall of this phenomenon should function as a reminder. If something sounds too cool to be real, it probably is. And by the way, ever since this new paper has come out that completely debunks the notion that this material was coal ash or anything else manufactured by humans, Popular Mechanics, who put this article out, has remained dead silent, as has everyone else. So what was I? Oh yeah, there are three different types of spherules. One is silicate rich, the others are iron rich, and then there finally is one called a glassy spherule or a G-type. Now let's go ahead and have a look at a graph to determine just how different these spherules are when compared to terrestrial rocks. The terrestrial samples are outlined in blue at the top point of the triangle. And as you can see, the S-types, the G types and also most of the I types, they are all well outside the range of what is typical on our planet. And there are all kinds of different elements in these various spherules. But the one thing that is the most unusual about the outliers, the extremely unusual spherules, are the ones that have beryllium, lanthanum, and uranium. And this has been discussed before. And these these were the spherules that were identified as being very close to coal ash, very closely resembling coal ash. Well, let's have a look at another graph comparing these particular spherules to typical coal ash samples and the types of elements that tend to be present in coal ash, at least the type of coal ash that it was announced that these samples closely resemble. Well, it turns out that all kinds of volatile elements are enriched in coal ash by factors of anywhere from 10 to 100 times as much as were present in the beryllium, lanthanum, uranium spherules. Some refractive elements are depleted by factors of 3 to 10 in coal fly ash when compared to the beryllium, lanthanum, uranium spherules. They have so little in common with the composition of coal fly ash, at least once a more detailed analysis was carried out. And if the individual who had released that paper had waited for these results to come out, well, he might have come to a very different conclusion. And by the way, so should these damn journalists. If you want to talk about bad science, how about scientific conclusions that come out before an analysis is even complete and scientific conclusions that are made without having access to any of the samples in the first place? And then let's jump over to irresponsible journalism claiming that these conclusions are the gospel truth simply because, to paraphrase the journalist from Popular Mechanics, they went into the argument with preconceived notions of what this substance was in the first place before they had any information. They believed that it was going to be something mundane, and so they latched on any scientific papers that supported this notion without first checking as to whether or not these papers were coming to their conclusion based on complete evidence. Completely irresponsible journalism, but not nearly as bad as the journalists who are now choosing to remain silent about all of this in spite of evidence that came out last month. 
So why does Avi Loeb believe that this might be the product of extraterrestrial technology rather than just some sort of unusual interstellar meteorite? Well, before I get to that, I'd like to thank Robert Meldrum and also Mackie, my latest Patreon supporters. Thank you so much for supporting this channel. It really makes a big difference to my ability to continue bringing this content, especially given the fact that Google is paying less and less for advertisers on YouTube than they ever have in the past. So thanks so much for that. And if you're interested in becoming a supporter as well, all the details are in the description. And as of right now, I'm offering a 20% discount on all merch to Patreon supporters, including this incredible Amuamua render created by famous space artist Nick Henning, especially for my channel. You can get it on a t-shirt, on a poster, whatever. I think it's amazing. And by the way, you may notice these tiny little spherical objects that Amuamua is dispatching to our planet. Incidentally, another one of these interstellar objects crashed off the coast of Portugal in 2017, at the same time that Oumuamua was making its way through our solar system. Okay, back to why Avi Loeb believes that this is not an interstellar meteor, but rather something artificial. The presence of beryllium, and especially uranium, and also lanthanum, is a very unusual thing about these samples. It is radically different than any meteorite sample that's ever been found in the past. Indeed, these elements are more commonly found in artificial objects, manufactured objects, and the uranium may be an indication of some sort of nuclear power source. And why did it crash? Well, first of all, we don't know for certain that it crashed. It could have been a heat shield burning up and only that part hit the ocean, whereas the rest of the craft made its way to a different location, a different destination in our atmosphere. But even if it did crash, we shouldn't be terribly surprised because a Muamua and objects like it have been in transit for sometimes millions of years. Even if the navigation and propulsion systems on this object were good enough to get it to our planet after all that time, it might not have been in good enough shape to survive the transit through our atmosphere. Or another possibility is that there were quite a number of these objects that decelerated before they hit our atmosphere and only this one malfunctioned and burned up. And it's worth keeping in mind that even today, 50% of the probes that we attempt to send to the moon, let alone interstellar destinations, fail. So we shouldn't be terribly surprised if alien probes fail as this one might have. So very interesting information, compelling information, proving at the very least that something from another solar system, something comprised of materials that we don't find, at least not in this particular combination, in objects that occur naturally in our own solar system. That being the case then, in my opinion, we have found the first debris from an extraterrestrial civilization. And if Avi Loeb manages to get the necessary funds, he's gonna go back off the coast of New Guinea and try to find more. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, please subscribe. It's very important the success of my channel. And as always, stay angry about space.